Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 238 today of Level Up. 60 minutes, of course, of live Q&A where your questions really do drive the show. They drive everything. If you're watching on YouTube, you can find out so much more about what we do in our channel. So do give this video a like, please, and subscribe to find out much more about APMG International. Uh, our colleague Blanche today is over in the social chat. So if you're joining us live, you will see her posting some questions and links and things like that um, so that you can uh, vote up the questions that you would most like the panel to answer. And of course, for you to be able to add your own. So the nice thing to do would be to introduce yourself, of course. So do please say hi to Blanche and tell her your name and of course the city from where you're joining. That will be really great. Now, if your question is selected, then your name's going to appear in the credits at the end of the show. So do get them all in early and stay with us to see that happening. Um, Objects are remarkable things, aren't they? They start small and grow bigger and deliver all kinds of different outcomes for different people. And um, a career in project management is something which is highly attractive to so many different people. And in fact, many of us who started off working on projects didn't even know that we were working on a project at the time because it wasn't really called a project. It might have been called something else. So how do you build those skills and how do you build a career, moreover, um, in project management in 2024? Well, we've got a brilliant panel lots of experience between them about how to go about doing this. So let's jump in and meet them. Bina Champanaria rejoins today. She is, of course, an accomplished trainer and coach who works with a broad client base across the UK and Europe. She spent time managing projects in agile environments, and she knows how to lead with influence. She's a strong networker with a commitment to professional development. So it's a delight to welcome her back to Level Up today. Welcome back, Bina. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, yes, it's great to be back on Level Up. I really love these shows because I learn a lot as well, and we have some great discussions. So thank you to all the viewers for joining this afternoon. Thanks so much, Bina. It'd be great to see you um, again today. Uh, Kath Comfrey is, of course, co-founder of Explosive Learning Solutions here in the UK, an organisation who work in risk, change and project management disciplines. Um, her contract management skills are in high demand as well, and they've helped between them thousands of professionals develop their careers in project management. She's a trusted coach and mentor to many, and she provides expert advice, education and training to her clients. Welcome back to Level Up, Kath. Thanks so much, Nick. I'm glad to be here. I'm very excited about today's conversation. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. And I think Blanche is also joining us from Oxford. I think from Memory Explosive Learning Solutions, it's your, is that the Town we're where in you're South based? Oxfordshire. We're in Harwell, actually, in oh, the Harwell okay. campus. All right. OK, thank you very much. Not a million miles away at any rate. Actor Singh joins for the first time today. Delighted to welcome her. She is Operations Director at Thought Agile, which is a really interesting organisation. So do look her up on LinkedIn. She's a management consultant by profession who specialises in project management and PMO roles. And she's currently working as a programme PMO lead. Um, where she brings her expertise in finance and um, her experience of project management to bear. So welcome to Level Up Actor. Lovely to meet you. Jen Nick, and I'm really happy to be here. Very excited. Okay, thank you so much. Richard Campbell rejoins today, a familiar face to many. He's the Director Product Engagement Lead at Agile Business Consortium. He's responsible, of course, for developing and delivering the Agile Business Consortium's portfolio of products that advance business agility. And he spent his career working across the advanced technology sector in a mix of commercial and product management roles. Welcome back to Level Up, Richard. Thanks, Nick. Well, it's a great opportunity to talk about project management, which I'm passionate about, because let's face it, without project managers, nothing would happen in this world. So uh, there you go. That's why it's so important to have sessions like this. <laughs> It's a really good point. It's a really good point. We kind of need the right sorts of frameworks to work within, don't we? We need the right sort of leadership. So it's really nice to have uh, project managers helping us to do that. Rejoining also today is Mark Rosner. Um, Mark, if you've been following um, Level Up, you'll start to recognise Mark a little bit, which is great. He's the founder, of course, and the principal consultant at Sunrise Path LLC. And they focus on project management in the healthcare sector. He's an active 
contributor to professional communities, and he shares his experience generously with others, mentoring and coaching colleagues to help them build their careers. So welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Nick. It's great to, to be back and, and just really, really excited to hear uh, some of the, the answers, people that have asked, you know, the ment- mentees of mine that have asked me these questions and uh, really looking to, to hear alternative uh, answers. Absolutely right. So thank you very much indeed. Now, um, joining us today is a special treat for us is Shanice Mitchell-Cox. She is our question master for today, joining us from South Wales. Um, It looks very bright and sunny in South Wales, Um, Shanice. Is that the case? It absolutely is. It feels like we've been waiting months for a day like today, uh, but we've been treated just before the weekend with a nice, beautiful, sunny day. So, uh, yeah, this always makes Fridays better, doesn't it? (laughs) It really does, especially when we look forward into the weekend. Um, And of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's spring. Um, It is firmly now into spring in the UK. And that usually means that it's winter in the morning and autumn in the afternoon with a bit of sunshine in the middle of the day. But hey ho, you make the best of it, don't you? Very good. Well, look, careers in project management, folks, that's what we're talking about today. And we've got some people joining from all around the world. We've got people from Australia. We've got people from South Africa and other places too, which we'll come to in a few moments. We'll give you guys a shout out. Um, But why don't we get underway and we'll put our first question to the panel, please. Shanice. Of course. Thanks, Nick. So we've got a question from Moira. What lessons, career experience, advice have you received that has had impacted your PM career? All right. Very good. Well, it's a great question. Thank you, Moira. So, Kath, why don't you start us off and then we'll hear from Richard. Well, I think it is a great question, as Nick's just said. Um, I'm going to have two, if that's okay. Um, The first one is transferable skills. Um, There are a whole host of transferable skills in project management. Um, So you might not necessarily think that you are a project manager at the moment, um, but if you sit down with a career coach, um, then they can very easily build on some of the things that you've done in the past um, that would be really useful in the project role. So that was my my first um, lesson. The second one is when things things go wrong. I think you really harden your use of the tools in project management when things haven't gone the way that you necessarily thought they would. Um, I didn't take risk registers terribly seriously when I first was a project manager. I now think they're one of the key tools that you use across all projects. Um, So I think that for me, that lesson that that says to you, hang on a minute, I need to do things differently because things haven't gone quite the way I was expecting them to. And honing in those skills are, are a key lesson for me. It's fascinating, isn't it? I, um, you know, about 100 years ago when I was in the software industry, um, I used to read real magazines, you know, Computer <laughs> Weekly, this kind of thing. And then somewhere in there would be uh, an article that says the top 10 reasons why projects fail. <laughs> And I have to say, when you look on LinkedIn, it's kind of like, well, there could have been a futurologist statement. So I totally agree with you, Kath. Having the chance, having the ability, having the courage to actually think, could we do this differently? Should we do this differently? You know, what can we learn from this? Is a really fantastic thing. So thank you so much, Kath. What a great way to start um, giving more of some thoughts. Uh, Richard, your thoughts, please, next, and then we'll go to Bina. Yeah, a piece of advice I received early in my career is sometimes you have to let individuals fail for the project to succeed. And I only actually realized that in the context of very often the project manager is the sort of catch-all. So if something doesn't work, oh, we'll rely on the project manager to get that thing done, whatever that thing is. And you mustn't let that happen. You've got to focus on being a good project manager, not substituting for failures of other people. So sometimes you've got to set the example and allow someone to drop the ball, even though you're fully aware they're dropping the ball, in order to keep make sure people hold are accountable for the things they've agreed to do, and you're not going to catch them if they fail. It's 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 a tricky one, that one, isn't it? It's a tricky one. It's kind of know thy people really well and also know thy project, I guess, in the sense that you, you want to try and to your point, and I totally agree with this by the way, you need people to learn, act and think in real time. You know, and if if they're struggling with that a little bit and, and you've been providing that, you know, first line support and enablement and all of those good things, 
I think that you're right. I think sometimes you actually have to allow so certainly somebody to stumble, if you like, in order to be able to, you know, really make uh, proper progress across the project life cycle. And a lesson will be learned, you know, through doing that. So thank you, Richard. Totally agree um, with that. Thanks so much. Uh, Bina, your thoughts, please. Then we'll hear from Acta. Yeah, I'm going to mention two things. I'm going to talk about people uh, briefly and structure. So, um, you know, being a being a new project manager, you feel a novice. You think I don't know, I don't know everything. And the thing is, you're not expected to know everything. So it's good to ask questions, you know, uh, and sound out your ideas with other people. So don't forget about other people. You're not there on your own. Do ask questions, especially if you join a company that's new and you're not sure how they're working. So ask questions. And the other thing about structure is that. Um, it wasn't until I did a, a certification in project management that gave me a real kind of grounding in the journey of a project. So that really helped me as well, gave me some good guidance and some best practice as well. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Bean. It's really good points there, very well made. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, Acta, your thoughts, please. Then we're going to go to Mark. So one really great advice that I remember um, was, um, was, you know, communication is the is the most important uh, skill that a project manager needs to have. But it's not just the project manager communicating with the stakeholders and the team, but it's also the team communicating with each other. So um, in one of the projects that I, I was a project manager for, the, the change management lead and the data the data, uh, data management lead, they were they did not like each other or whatever because the data person thought, oh, we are the ones doing all the work and the change person, all she has to do is send emails and, you know, just communicate, oh, this is happening. So her job is easy and she's wasting my time by asking me questions. But that's not the case. And my it's a, my mentor then, he said, um, your change management lead and data management lead are not talking to each other. And it's your job to make sure that they talk to each other and they actually like each other. So I think that was very important, but not just you, but the team uh, themselves, you know, get along and <laughs> they, they are talking to each other because when we go in larger forums and this gap goes that he doesn't know what he is doing or he doesn't know uh, as a team, you know, it, it shows the gaps. Uh, so I feel like that that was important to close the gap in, in the team, you know, in the various parts of the team. Yeah, absolutely, I, I right. That. absolutely right. Absolutely right. And um, it's something as well that you you initially you kind of see and you might observe and so on. And sometimes, you know, to um, the the point kind of earlier on that Richard was was saying, you, you know, you you need to allow a little bit of opportunity for people to to recognise that this isn't working you know, before you intervene. But intervene at some point, you know, it's probably necessary. Um, yeah. Very good. Yeah, thanks so much, Acton. And a great lived experience there for us to share. I'm sure we can all relate to that um, as well. Mark, final thoughts on this? Uh, be okay with change. Embrace the change. Uh, it's going to happen. And uh, it's you'll otherwise be frustrated. You'll start making decisions based upon things that just aren't aren't there. Uh, you'll find reasons to make bad decisions. So be okay with the change. Manage the change. Embrace the change. All right. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. What a great question, Maura, um, to get us going with that blend of you know lessons learned and career experience and advice received and so on. So a really great question. Now, out online are our producers. So these are the folks who are the most important um, on the show because they are determining which questions we're going to be uh, asked um, as we go through. Amir joins us from the University of Sydney. Now, I know that the clocks have changed in our favour, but nonetheless, it's Friday night. So, Amir, top top marks for commitment. Okay, thank you so much for joining, giving us some of your Friday evening. We appreciate it. From the University of Sydney, uh, absolutely wonderful um, uh, institution, by the way. i uh, visited there many times. Uh, Julian rejoins today from Johannesburg, a regular viewer, of course, and follows Level Up. Um, on a frequent basis. So hi, Julian. Really great to see you. Thank you so much for joining. And we've also got uh, Katerina joining from Wales. And um, she did put another comment in the chat, actually, that says it's very sunny today. All right. And it's three suns next to each other, which is a, a brilliant kind of star rating now. And um, then might not appear quite right on our graphic software. So apologies for that, 
uh, Katerina, but um, thank you very much for sharing that we're having a really lovely spring day. And Lloyd joins us, Lloyd Filani, um joins us from uh, Midrand in South Africa, which is fantastic as well. So welcome, Lloyd. Um, hope that we can get some good questions from you guys into the panel. Don't be shy. Just pop your question in the chat and Blanche will pick it up and uh, bring it into the software for you. All right, very good. Now on that comment, I think, Shanice, we should probably move on. So let's take our next question if we can. Wonderful. Thanks, Nick. We've actually got a question from one of our panellists, Mark. Are there other roles that I can look to fill besides the specific project manager title? All right, very good. Well, Mark, with your patience, I'm going to come to you last and let some colleagues share their thoughts um, initially. Um, Actor, in your experience, what, what, what would you what advice might you offer to this question? So other roles uh, that are, that, so they cover most aspects of project management, but they're not, you know, they're not advertised as project management roles are cutover, uh, cutover leads. That's one of so when, when you're, you're changing something and you ha- there's a very specific role that you need to do to manage the transition from here to there. So that's one. There's release manager also that I have seen. Um, uh, sometimes change management also can be uh, used. Uh, it, it's also uh, broadly within the project management uh, umbrella. So those are those are some of the ones that I can think of. Excellent. Thank you very much as well, because it does vary as well, uh, country by country sometimes, and not sometimes in industry as well. Um, Kath, you've worked with lots of folks. They might not have had the project manager title, but perhaps, um, you know, share your experience a bit about related roles even that mm. PMs can transition into perhaps. So we've already mentioned risk managers. Um, that mm. obviously is a strong area in this particular area. And if you're going to go with risk management, then benefits would also fit in there. So a benefit manager. Um, I see a lot of adverts for portfolio and program managers. Um, the big area of increase at the moment is project controllers. Um, and I think that's a really, really nice entry level role. Um, there's a lot of work in project controls at the moment, um, particularly with regards to obligations and making things that sure things are done. So um, I'm seeing increase in those types of things. And then on the periphery to this, you've also got your stakeholder managers, your facilitators, your account managers, all of they these will also need project management skills um, and a part of the whole project management team. There's a whole host of drugs in this space. Yeah, I certainly think that the three Ps go together quite naturally, don't they? This sort of project and then program. And then portfolio. And and we we might touch on that. Do you think every project manager is secretly a program, aspiring to be a program manager? Or do you think as people progress in their career, they kind of think, I'm really pleased that I'm not a program manager because I actually quite like doing the running my project my way? I'm not sure that, I mean, people think of project, program, portfolio. Um, Mm -hmm. as as if it's a hierarchy. Um, I think both, it depends on the size of your organization to a certain extent, doesn't it, Nick? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, you might not be able to have that hierarchy in quite the same way. Um, And if you're working as a consultant, it might be that you really don't have um, that hierarchy in the way that that a larger organization might have. But I think there are different skills required in each one. Um, it's not unusual for program managers to um, to be, you, know, you could be working on a very large program um, or even a very large project and it still is a project. Um, so I'm not sure that necessarily the hierarchy works with regards to experience. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Kath. Um, Richard, let's get your thoughts on this, then we'll go to Bina. So what struck me is that some organizations think very clearly in terms of projects, as in if they need to deliver something, bring about a change, they think in project terms. But I've worked for various companies who don't think in project terms at all. They all think about they're doing a product development activity or they have a portfolio of products. Now, having said that, there are project management functions within that environment. They just don't call it a project manager. 
but it's very often bound up, you could say to a degree, a product manager, a product owner has to be a project manager by their nature. Some to degree scrum masters in that sort of role. It really depends on the structure of the organization. So there's a whole mix of reasons why these skills are essential, even though the organization might not refer to the, the project manager title specifically. Okay, thank you very much indeed. I um, appreciate that. We're just uh, battling a bit of the technology in the background. <laughs> it's a really good point. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Bina, your thoughts, and then we're going to go to Mark. Yeah, so the question is asking, is there an alternative to project manager role, if you like? But I mean, there's also the project management office, the PMO, which is something that uh, is quite um, prominent in a lot of organizations, and there's a lot of expertise in there. So although you may not be managing a project, you may be supporting project managers, and there's a lot of, uh, lot of involvement there. It's not just necessarily just administrative work. So there could be a role within the project management office, if you like, that's supporting other project managers. It still adds value to a project and is helpful for project managers as well. Thank you very much indeed. Really good point. And uh, Mark, now you raised the question. I kind of think that it was, you know, partly a rhetorical question um, with your background, but nonetheless, um, what are your thoughts here? What typical kind of career paths do you see and what options do you see available to people? Yeah. For, well, first of all, I want to thank the other the other panelists because this is a, a question that comes up uh, in almost all of my first mentee sessions is, is I want to be a project manager. Well, what do you want to do, right? This is this is really the the, the underlying question. Uh, I, I'm glad that change manager was brought up. Uh, one of the things that I didn't hear yet is business analyst. Uh, there's a lot of crossover that I see folks come in and they say, I really want to be a project manager, but I don't want to deal with people. Uh, and it's it's always well, let me find something else for you to do, and within that larger umbrella. Uh, and, and even though you're still doing people work and, and business analysis, it, it's a much more one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation. So I, I've been able to move folks in there. Uh, I think project quality is, is an area, uh, usually part of the product project office uh, capacity. Uh, and then process improvement. Uh, I, I've worked with a lot of folks who uh, either come in or go from uh, the process improvement area, uh, whether they're lean or into the Six Sigma. So a lot of, a lot of options, which I, I, I appreciate. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, really good. Um, really appreciate that panel. So lots of different things. That I, I guess one of the things that it may well be worthwhile considering, folks, is that if, you're, if you want to get into project management, then volunteering is a really good way in you know, for you to be able to do that, to start to allow other people at work or even outside of work in, in a, you know, a, a non-paid role for you to start to build up some experience and have something to talk about in terms of your experience of leading or managing a project or contributing to projects as a contributor of some fashion or another. Um, so very good. All right, well, let's move on if we can. Shanice, I think we should take our next question to the panel, please. Thanks, Nick. We've got a question from Jody in Glasgow, UK. What would the panel say are the most essential hard and soft skills when developing a career as a project manager? All right, so we've got the most essential now hard and soft skills um, to think about. Kath, why don't you start us off with what your essentials are? Um, great question again. Thank you so much for it. Um, I'm going to make sure that I stick in this hard skill area and soft skill area because I think they are very different. Um, I think it's really important that you and in fact your whole team understand the project management methodologies you're choosing to use. Um, I often think that teams are talking different languages because they have been trained in different base level methodologies and that's quite dangerous for a project. So, um, I'm going to put that as one of my hard skills. And I'm only going to choose two because I know the rest of the team will want to jump in. But the other hard skill is your ability to schedule and time manage. And we might get to AI at some stage in this conversation, I feel certain, Nick. But for me, the scheduling and time management skill is a really important hard skill that you need to, you need to tune into and make sure that you're comfortable with. So if I turn to soft skills, a couple there as well. 
Um, the first one is communication. You need to be able to communicate as a project manager. Um, you've got a wide load of stakeholders and you need to be able to communicate both in written form and in presentationally, I would suggest. Um, and I'm going to put as my second soft skill problem solving. Um, it, things will go wrong. I've mentioned this already. And I think your ability to problem solve is um, key. And, and the more complex the situation and the more input from various stakeholders, the more your problem solving skills will need to be used. So I'm going to go for those two soft skills, communication and problem solving. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Two essential, absolutely essential, I would say. Um, Richard, what are your thoughts on essential hard and soft skills? Well, first of all, I think Kath has got the biggest ones. Um, so I think it's in, in decreasing order of priority. I would then say Emotional intelligence has got to be amongst the the next one uh, in in that area. So, first of all, you know, starting with self awareness, a project manager has to be aware of how they're coming across. It goes back to the communication point that Kath was making too. It's they need to know how good a job they are, and find some way of getting some feedback to find out what they're actually like, and then similarly be able to look at others and see their behaviours and help them become better at communicating from that perspective as well. So you're, you're going through the full gamut of making sure self-awareness leads to awareness of others towards improving the performance of individuals and teams. And you can only do this really if you are in touch with those emotional aspects of, of managing a project. So it's clearly a soft skill that you're, you're looking to develop here. I, th I think you're right. The you know people may have expressed this in different ways. You know, more recently people talk about emotional intelligence, don't they? Or you know, working with empathy and these kinds of things. Being able to read between the lines, being able to know people, you know, know people really well, and understand that this person is generally quite contained. They're quite understated. These are that when they say we may have a small problem, it's rather like Houston from Tranquility Base. Not, actually, Apollo 13 never quite got to Tranquility Base, did they? But you kind of get my drift. You know, there's a certain style that some people have. And then you have other people at the other end of the spectrum who are, you know, really quite noisy over relatively modest problems. And so you need to understand all of that and have the emotional intelligence to connect into different sorts of people, different personalities, and understand what it is that they are truly um, uh, asking for or looking for in the way of support. So thank you very much indeed, Richard. That's really great. Beanie, your thoughts, please. Then we'll hear from Mark. Yeah, well, I think uh, both Kath and Richard have said some brilliant things, really, you know, really, really key points. So uh, I'll just add a little bit more onto some of those things. If we talk about communication, it's not just about, oh, we're going to send an email to everybody, but you have to think about the audience. You've got to think about things like neurodivergence, di um, inclusion. You know, how do people receive information? How do they come back to us? So we have to focus on the people. And if we talk about communication, we have to make it effective. So we have to make sure we know who the audience is, what's the best way to communicate. So that's that going a little bit further on the communication side of things. Now, the other couple of things is like, you know, do a SWOT analysis on yourself. What are your own strengths? What are your weaknesses? Where do you need to develop? You know, if you're, if you're, not, very, um, if you're not very technical, is that going to be a problem, for instance? What do you need to learn? So, so you need to sort of know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, and also you need to manage your own time. So that's a skill, you know. If you want to manage a project, the time schedule, well, how are you at managing your own time? You know, you've got to be good at managing yourself first. You know, are you on time? Do you stick to what you're going to do? If you don't do that, then maybe that will that's not going to help your project. So probably a little bit of work on yourself is needed, I think. All right. Thank you very much. It is a good point, really, isn't it? We do need to think about that as we do these roles. Thank you so much. Um Let's then go to Mark and then to Ekta. Well, first of all, echo everything that's been said. I, I Nick, uh, I think you did a great uh, job of, of talking about the, the empathy aspect of this, which is always my first go-to is leading with empathy. Um, one area that I have not heard us talk about yet is critical thinking. Um, and it, it definitely separates out uh, really strong project managers, I think, from the other project managers are the ones that are able to sort of look at certain situations and really help 
drive decisions, drive through risk or issues. Uh, that's a, that's where I'd go. Okay, thank you very much, Steve Mark. Great advice. Actor, um, you've had a lot of experience of this and also coaching other people to do this better. What, what, what are your thoughts? I think um, a lot of what I wanted to say has already been covered. <laughs> but uh, for the hard skills, I, uh, I, I, I feel scope management is, is very important uh, because uh, scope is everything. <laughs> Uh, if you know, if you if you are able to manage the scope well, um, you 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 can get a lot of things right uh, as a project manager, uh, and that's that's where we struggle uh, so many times. Uh, people are always trying to you know add add more stuff to what you have to do. So hard skills, scope management, soft skills. Uh, I also I completely agree with the emotional intelligence part. Um, other than that, the two other soft skills that I think are very important is um, negotiation. So being able to negotiate skills in, you know, negotiating resources, timelines, priorities, that's that's something that, that you really need to have as a project manager. And the other soft skill um, that is, is very important is conflict resolution. So uh, you'd be surprised uh, <laughs> uh, to see how many times there's... Uh, like people don't get along, uh, not not just within your team, but you know, there's a client who who might have an inherent bias. So when they come into in, into a meeting or something, they come with with that with with that bias, uh, and and everything that they say is is uh, driven by that bias. So to be able to uh, to resolve conflicts uh, is 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 a very important skill for a project manager. Absolutely right. And um, we do, we do, it's kind of, it's an interesting role, isn't it? Sometimes you need to be the confidant. Sometimes you need to be, you know, the yeah. leader. Sometimes you need to be the career diplomat um, yeah. almost to be able to yeah. get things done. Yeah. And it's such a broad range mm. of skills, broad range of disciplines that, that are required. So thank you very much indeed. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, Kath, uh, some final thoughts from you. So let's, let's bring this back to, basics again. I think it's really important to have some of these technical skills, um, technical proficiency in use of software and the software that your team is choosing to use is hugely important for project managers. Understanding the data that you've got coming into you, um, even understanding, you know, are we using Excel and in which case you need to use it a little bit more proficiently than, than just a basic Excel user, or is it that the team have chosen to use MS Project. Do you have those technical skills? Um, I, so I would add in technical proficiency. Um, and I think also budgeting and financial management, again, a hard skill, but you need to understand those numbers. Um, and that that feeds into the conversation we've just had on scope. I think that that's hugely important to understand the numbers. Again, if I'm going to add to soft skills, um, I'm going to go with adaptability. Um, particularly if you are working in an agile environment, um, you need to have that uh, ad agile and adaptability of mind and thought. Um, so it brings in quite a lot of the other things that we've said, but I think it's a key key skill um, in an agile development or an agile project. Um, perhaps not, not so much on waterfall, but even on waterfall, you'll get a whole host of change coming in. So you need to be adaptable and you know not dogmatic. Um, but there are occasions you also need to have a whole host of dogmatic, um, you know, tenacious <laughs> skills. So I, I, you can't really say it's one lot of things and not another. No, and I think that's the fascination, isn't it? I think that's why people find it so rewarding. You know, there are development opportunities and challenges in equal measure across a very broad range of different skills and disciplines that we might need. Now, one thing that I think, by the way, brilliant answers panel and fantastic question, Jody, because that's right at the heart of the matter. Okay, that's what makes the difference between a project manager who is kind of like, mm, yeah, okay, fine, and somebody who is really fabulous to work with. It's us looking and striving to be become proficient across a whole spectrum of these hard and soft skills. I do think that the um, uh, one might have been overlooked a little bit, perhaps it was implicit rather than explicitly mentioned um, by the team, is facilitation. And I'll tell you for why, because often in the situation, you're not, the project manager is in the meeting, not necessarily to be the loud voice but actually to coordinate. And in order to be able to do that, you need a 
strong understanding of a wide range of different facilitation techniques. If you're going to get the quiet voices heard, if you're going to engage with your stakeholders in the right way, if you're going to prioritize properly in order to be able to get the top three things that can be done rather than the 453 things that the noisy voices might wish to be done, I would suggest facilitation ought to be in there, um, at least in your kind of top five. But there we go. All right. So that's just my little thought for you. Um, if you want to explore that and other things, then um, make your comments in the chat. You know, you've got a huge audience today on LinkedIn. So it'd be really good to hear your thoughts. There's some really nice comments coming through. Uh, we can't show them at the moment. So I do apologize, but I'm going to read one out for you. It's just coming from Aaron Singh. Um, uh, Aaron's talking about the four C's communication, is one collaboration commitment is a lovely one isn't it commitment mm, wow fantastic thank you aaron and compassion are oh, they are interconnected says aaron an essential components of successful project management so that's fantastic so thank you aaron um i'd like to say there's a book token on its way there is no prize <laughs> but nonetheless I kind of felt like felt like there ought to be a prize for that one. That was fantastic. So thank you, Aaron. But nonetheless, our grateful thanks to you for putting that into the chat and sharing that with the Level Up community. That's really fabulous. We'll come back to some other comments in a few moments. In the meantime, um, Shanice, if we can, let's move on. We'll take our next question to the panel as they're starting to stack up. Wonderful. Thanks, Nick. We've actually had a live question come in from Dr. David McCreary. How important are leadership skills for project managers and how can we develop them? All right. Leadership skills. Now, now we're talking. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, mm. David, Dr. McCreary, uh, for posting that as a question in the live feed chat, which I'm just starting to rescue and get back again. So that's uh, some good news for us. Let's move the order around a little bit. And this time, Mark, we're going to start with you and then we'll go to Bina. Yeah, I think there's a, a, a very large component that leadership needs to, to play uh, in project management. Uh, if, if you were, again, to sort of separate out, as, as you said earlier, Nick, you know, sort of the, the great project managers and the others, uh, it's a leadership skill. Uh, and in terms of how to develop them, uh, we talked earlier about emotional intelligence. Uh, and I think tapping into that emotional intelligence. And then the, the last thing I would add, which we really haven't touched on yet, is mentorship, is find mentors, and, and I say that plural, find people that you can learn from uh, that can help develop those those soft skills in you uh, to make you a better leader. You're absolutely right. I, I think the, the very best competitors, you see this in the Olympic Games, the Olympics are coming up soon, I think, um, you see them being coached you know, and often, or if you follow tennis or if you follow any um, sport, more individual performance perhaps than team performance, but the coach is the main person. The coach is the one who's referenced and, you know, people can't achieve their best without a coach or a mentor, somebody who's going to help, um, you know, to guide and to shape. So really great point. Thank you so much indeed, um, Mark. That's excellent. Um, let's then go, if we can, to um, Hector, I do apologise. <laughs> uh, let's take Hector next. Hi. Uh, so yes, um, I think we can all agree that leadership skills are very important uh, for for any project manager. Uh, you know, team motivation and engagement uh, is one of the key things you need to do as a project manager. Decision making, uh, again, uh, something you know that's that's very important for a project manager to be able to do. And uh, th that's a leadership skill. You need to have conflict resolution that I mentioned uh, earlier as well. Um, uh, creating a positive work environment, that is uh, that for me is is very um, important for a project manager. So those are some of the leadership skills that, that I think um, that a project manager needs to have uh, to be, you know, to be able to be successful in their role. Um, Thank you. Developing leadership skills. I see. There's a second part to the question. How do you develop it? It's it's mm. a continuous process, isn't it? Uh, I feel it, it, it. 
it involves both formal and informal um, you know formal training and practical experience uh, so it, there are some things that you can you can you can go on training then you can learn uh, and then there's some things that you just learn every day uh, on the job um, so yeah that. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's super helpful. Um, I do apologise. I lost my thread a little earlier. Bina, um, your thoughts, please, and then we'll go to Richard. No problem, Nick. Um, yes, leadership is all about working with people, isn't it? And, and it, we, we're not doing this command and control kind of leadership anymore. That doesn't stand. You know, we, we've heard about facilitative style of leadership. You've probably heard of servant leadership. Uh, and what it means is that the PM is respecting the team, is trusting the team that the team know what they need to do. So from an agile context, you know, the team that are developing something, they know what they need to do. They'll work it out themselves. They're self-organizing. So they don't need the PM telling them and planning everything that needs to be done. So it's this this way of uh, accepting that um, it's a new different style of leadership. It doesn't mean you tell people what to do, but you make sure that people have what they need to be able to get on with the job. So you're kind of uh, helping them along without telling them what to do. So that it means good communication. It means good behaviours and a good relationship with the team and the project manager. Yeah, absolutely right. I think you've hit on a golden thread here, uh, Bina, which is about thinking differently about projects and, you know, how we evolve as project managers and so on. Um, and, you know, support and enable rather than necessarily always directing. Um, Richard, this is very much your world. It's very much the way of the Agile Business Consortium helping people understand that, you know, embracing almost almost at a f- philosophical level, but using that way of thinking in practical, pragmatic ways. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Bina nailed it um, with the the last answer. She's you know uh, exactly on the right track from my perspective. Um, the problems which we're trying to solve today as, as organizations and the project manager is very often in the hot seat to ensure that we, we address these problems are so complex, so volatile, so um, ambiguous that you can't have the idea of a command structure anymore. Um, you've got to utilize the creative brilliance of the people and large numbers of people, not use them as simply tools or resources to work against a project. You've really got to get them engaged and the only way you can do that is 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 this this collaborative style that Bina alluded to here. Now, we've we have this this idea of the nine principles of agile leadership, and and I believe that Shanice has just dropped it into social. Have a look at those nine principles. There's a lot to it, and there's there's actually a, a micro credential through the Open University you can do on it. It's a big thing. There's lots of content in there. So again, bit, picking up actually the point that that uh, Ekta made earlier, this mix of formal learning and then but you've got to put it into practice you've got to take these ideas and then take them individually and think well how can i be better at those things how can i apply those ideas absolutely right and you know it i i love that and uh, those nine principles um really echo very well so even if you're very experienced in this okay even if you're kind of thinking yeah i get that i get that i know they are child manifesto you know and so on so on honestly this may just be a reminder of four or five of them but you will also get added value by going and looking and reading again refreshing our understanding because like everything in life we tend to develop little little habits little bad habits and then if you don't correct them over time they actually get in the way of your performance overall so definitely worthwhile so thank you very much indeed um richard great advice um kath your thoughts on this on both the importance and also how can we develop those skills and and get better at it so i'm going to tip this around and i'm really hoping richard is going to give us the um drop code for this one as well and and i'm going to key you up, Mark, with regards to um, some of the work that you've done. So if you guys can do some work in the background, that would be awesome. Um, So I'm going to start by saying that actually learning from others is a key part of this. Um, I think it's really challenging at the moment with a lot of people working away from the office. Actually, I think that there is a big thing about watching your peers and how that they um, are performing with regards to project management. Um, And, um, you know, those water cooler moments that we used to have in offices where we were able to observe 
rather than go and ask questions. I think that's quite an important part. Um, but case studies, I mean, Richard was talking earlier about the fact that there is a um, competition coming up where they will talk about case studies. I know that Mark has written a book that again, talks about case studies in project management and how things can be done well. I think those are really important. Um, I think it's called executing excellence, which I think is um, you know, a really important job with regards to you know talking about what's went, what went well as a project manager, what didn't. Um, I always seem to mention Cotter at some stage, so I'm going to mention him. Um, you know, Cotter and his iceberg, um, my iceberg is melting. Thank you so much, Cotter, for writing your brilliant book. Um, but Fred was a leader um, and almost a project manager. He and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of Aaron here and go with some type of acronym. Um, so I think there is a part of me that says um lead with um with being a visionary. Um, I do hear what Bina said, um, listen to the whole team, but I think there is that visionary part as well. So lead in that perspective. Be an excellent communicator. So my E is excellence. Um, make sure that you can communicate in all of those different ways that we've already dis, um, discussed. Um, my D is um, decisive, which those of you that um, realize I've missed out my A completely is be accountable. So lead in being visionary, be an effective communicator. That's my E. My A is be accountable. Make sure that you're accountable for the project that you are delivering, um, both your resources and your actions, uh, your responsibilities. Um, you know, celebrate those achievements. Um, make sure that you learn from those things that have gone wrong, and then be decisive. Um, but for me, you know, watch what's going on wrong around you. Um, read some of the books that are around you. Listen in to what's going well and what's not going so well. There's so many opportunities to learn, I think. Um, you know, I, I believe very much in working with and for people who are, are prepared and happy to be that constant sponge with regards to learning new things. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to put a link into the social chat for everybody. It is a book and it's available from other booksellers as well. But the link that we're going to post um, is actually for Amazon. It's a book called Executing Excellence. So thank you, Mark, for the recommendation. Mark is actually one of the contributing authors um, to that book. Um, the lead author, I think, is John Connolly. Um, so we'll give him a shout out too. And also there's a gentleman on there called Adrian Dooley. And if you follow project management and you follow project management for some time, then Adrian may be one of the people that you kind of click and say, oh yeah, I've just seen a post from Adrian. I want to read that because it's always useful and there's real value in it. And of course he is the lead author on the Praxis uh, framework as well. So excellent. Thank you very much indeed panel. Now then, um, We've, we've been having so much fun. We're actually running out of time. We've got 12 minutes left to run and we've got too many questions to fit in. So we're going to have to pick up the pace somewhat. Shanice, let's take our next live question to the panel, please. Wonderful. Thanks, Nick. We've got a question from Carl Drury Woods. If there is a new PM entering this field, how would you recommend that they find, they bridge the gap from learning the theories and putting them into practice? There is a moment, isn't there, in life where you have to stop reading the book and start juggling. You not necessarily want to juggle with the chainsaws. Kath, where would you recommend that you start, the Carl starts, you know, kind of making that transition from the theory to the, to the practical? There's nothing scarier than a blank piece of paper. And at some stage, you've just got to get on and do it um, and accept that you might fail and make the wrong decision, go the wrong direction, but just get on and do it. Pull on those big pants and just do it <laughs> there you go it's a great it's a great phrase doesn't it you have to have a bit of confidence you have to kind of if you're going to learn to swim you actually have to get a bit wet at any rate you know and take your feet off the floor um richard how metaphorically would you do would you push somebody in at the deep end or would you encourage them to you know start off at a depth of where they feel comfortable I think the place I'd all go, go to look is in your own, your personal life, your social life. I mean, we, we all, I don't know, some of us organise weddings, we, we organise stag parties, we organise friends to get together for a summer holiday. Um, there, there are things of that nature. And what you can do is you can just start to do it rather more rigorously and apply many of the principles of project management that were spoken here to any of those activities. And that's a great way in practice 
to put the theory well into practice that's exactly the point so i would look to that sort of thing if you are completely new to this okay thank you very much indeed great suggestion there uh, volunteer try it out yeah makes a lot of sense build that confidence up and also it gives you real work examples to be able to share with other people as well um actor final thoughts on this um uh, so to gain practical experience, I would say start small, uh, begin with small projects as a part of the project team where you can you know, apply your theoretical knowledge in, in, in smaller bits uh, under the guidance of an exp- experienced project manager. Um, another way um, that I uh, recommend is shadowing. Uh, so if, if there's a project manager, you, you prove to them that uh, you, know, you are you are ready to do this and and start shadowing them if you can, uh, and that will that will help you gain that confidence and and learn um, learn practical. Things. Absolutely right, absolutely right, and um, you can accelerate your learning as well. Spend time, hang out with people, help them out. Okay, Mm -hmm. you might be a BA on a project, you might be an engagement lead of a particular work stream, hang out with some other folks, you know, go and visit colleagues who are in the PMO. That's where the magic happens often. You'll learn a great deal, you know, as a result of doing that. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. No, no, please go ahead, Dector. Can I add, they can, there's also professional associations that they can join, like the Agile Business Consortium. You can take memberships and that gives you a lot of resources. Yes. Absolutely right. So we'll come on to that in in a moment or two. Thank you very much indeed. Great thoughts, Hector. Uh, Excellent. Well, um, we're going to try and squeeze in one final question, but we're going to have to be super fast. So top points here, panel, for uh, being able to summarise. Washington has a question, Shanice. Yeah, thanks, Nick. So how can projects managers and organisations better prepare themselves for talent management? All right. Now, this is a phrase which is being used quite a lot now across a range of different disciplines. How do you get the very best out of the talent that is perhaps seconded onto a project? Because you don't always get to pick your team, do you? Mark, what are your thoughts on working with the team that you've got? Well, I think you you look to find the advantages. Uh, so as, as a a, either the uh, project manager, senior project manager, or PMO leader, I always look to pair uh, my more junior project managers on projects. Uh, in fact, I have often requested and sometimes required uh, that each project budget for training uh, of an additional resource. So that is a self-generating, self-educating uh, group. Thank you very much indeed. What a great question, Washington. I think, you know, one of the things that I would say is that um, it really helps to spend some time thinking about the context of your team and not just from a functional expertise, but also, you know, their personality types and the way that they work. So you might want to look at praxisframework.org. I'll ask the team to actually put a little link into the social chat for you. And on that, there is actually a, um, a little tool um, called DISC that you can use. And in that tool, you can explore your preferences and the preferences of others and how they may respond in different situations. Um, you may also have a little look uh, beyond uh, at the work of a gentleman called Meredith Belbin. And Belbin uh, spent a lot of time trying to figure out what makes a high-performing team, what mix of not just personality types, but behaviours do you actually need in a genuinely high-performing team? Uh, so that's well worth Googling as well. Uh, Belbin, B-E-L-B-I-N. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, thank you, Washington, um, for joining us and for asking the questions. Uh, Washington's over in Minnesota, actually, uh, in the US. So thank you very much indeed for asking that question. And apologies for us being unable to actually show the questions on the screen, uh, but we do appreciate it. Um, we've got some comments that we're getting through very, very slowly, but most of them are kind of stuck in the machine somewhere. So closing remarks then, panel, if we can. Uh, it's been a very fast race through the world of project management careers. Um, Richard, what are your reflections on today, please? I think listening to the whole team here and the interplay between the different answers, how 
one person's answers led to another. It makes you realize there's so much to project management, so many different ways you think about it. I would, you know, it's a great profession. I would encourage you, if you're thinking about it, to embark on and pick up on some of the advice that was given here. It was a, a great place to start in your journey of learning. Yeah, absolutely right. And, um, you know, if you have connected with somebody and you like the way that they've been thinking and their thinking is your way of thinking, then do reach out to them on LinkedIn. You know, all of us are here. Everybody on the panel is here for you. So um, you can find a link to our LinkedIn profiles um, on apmginternational.com. Just look for events and today's event. We're all listed on there. So you can connect to us that way. Um, Kath, your thoughts, please. And then we'll hear from Mark. I agree. Um, and, and I'm so glad you mentioned um, reaching out to people on the panel on LinkedIn, um, because I think we are all very keen to continue to learn from each other. And I think that that's a really useful um, way of actually doing so. Um, as always, it's been a great discussion. Um, you know, we've gone down lots of different routes, which is always perfect. Um, I know there'll be a part two later in the year, um, and I look forward to either being part of it or listening into it. Absolutely. Thank you, Kath. Thank you for your contribution today. We really appreciate it. Um, Mark, you've given us some of your Friday evening very generously and provided a lot of value into today's discussion. What are your reflections? Uh, a great conversation. Love the questions that came in from, from the uh, audience. Uh, I see a lot of people who are thinking about getting into project management. And as Richard said, it's a, it's a great great career to have. People ask, is it a job or is it a career? It's a career. If it's a job, you're not doing it right. I think it's the kind of thing, the kind of role that transcends, isn't it? You, you, you probably earn a living from it. That makes sense. But it's your passion, really. People who are great at anything, doesn't matter if you're, you know, making furniture or painting pictures or you know, um, whatever it is that you're choosing to do in life, if it's your passion, what was the phrase? I'm probably going to make a mess of this now, but it's something along the lines of you won't, if you enjoy your job, you won't work a day in your life. Something along those lines anyway. So exactly. that's certainly true. Um, Bina, you've always had a passion for this and helping others and elevating them in their careers. What, what, what are your reflections on today? Well, I think it's been brilliant. It's gone really fast. There's some great questions. Uh, for, for those people who uh, want to get into project management or uh, improve, what I suggest and is something we haven't really mentioned is learn about AI and learn about data because that's something mm -hmm. in every industry, in every profession, it's here. So, so get savvy, you know, learn about it. Don't limit yourself. Spend some time, uh, podcasts, videos, whatever, but, but learn about it. Increase your knowledge. Thank you very much indeed. Great point, actually, because it's no longer on the horizon. It's very much here. It's part of our daily working lives now. And uh, Ekta, um, your thoughts on today's show, please. Um, it was a great discussion. I, was, I really enjoyed um, being a part of this group, and I've, I've learned a lot myself. Uh, so um, I would love to be a part of this uh, again. Excellent. Thank well, thank you very much indeed, Jan. Thank you for, for uh, having the courage to jump in and move from the audience into being one of the panel. It's really brilliant to see that happening and uh, made a great contribution today. So thank you so much indeed. Um, Shanice, uh, it wasn't just great sunshine in Wales, but it was actually there was a lot of light and a lot of energy being shared from the panel today. Absolutely. I always find learning is better when we do it together. Um, and I just want to share a quote, actually, from Helen Keller. Alone, we can do so little, but together we can do so much. And I think that sums up what Level Up Your Career is all about. It really does, doesn't it? A brilliant community, a very safe space. And um, I have to say, I, I'm so sorry that we weren't able to reflect the energy in the chat as well. It's been some amazing comments from such a range of different people today on a Friday afternoon as well. So we really do thank you genuinely for that. We will, we'll, of course, all of your comments will be available in the replay of the video on LinkedIn or on YouTube. Um, so whichever platform you were contributing from today, it was really great to have you. So thank you so much. Um, thank you, of course, to everybody online being the producers for your excellent questions today. It's 
Well, the panel, we can always talk amongst ourselves, but it's so much better, isn't it? You know, when you ask a great question and that really engages us in that learning journey. So thank you very much. Your name will appear in the credits if your question was selected. So do hang around and look out for that. Um, now, over on the apmginternational.com website, you will, of course, be able to search for the answers to more than 2,300 previously asked questions uh, with their answers. Um, it's totally free and it connects you with more than 300 experts from all over the world in many different disciplines. And don't forget that you can also listen to the audio versions of the shows on your preferred podcast platform. Just search for Level Up Your Career, APMG International, and you will find us easily enough. Now, looking forwards on Monday at 8 a.m. UK time, we're going to be looking at how to achieve an agile mindset, a little bit of an extension to some of today's conversations, I think, before on Friday the 19th, well, we talk about service management with a show that's really focused on how to break into that most rewarding of professions. And Monday the 22nd, of course, um, coming up is more general. It's actually looking at career development, you know, how do we secure our future, not just for ourselves, but for our teams and our organisations as well. All right. So we'll look forward to seeing you as part of the uh, Level Up community on those events. Don't forget, head over to the YouTube channel. Do give this video, please, a like. doesn't take a moment, doesn't cost you anything, but it helps others discover the content. And that's the sharing thing that you can do for colleagues today. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel so that we can let you know what's coming up next. If you would like to know that, or you may also email us and just ask us for a personal summary. Mention it in the chat of what's coming up and how to you and join us here on the panel and level up your career with APMG. So thanks very much, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you all again on Monday.